Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, after getting a ton of requests, I'm finally doing a tutorial on how to set up a free Minecraft server that can potentially run 24-7 without any weird hacks or complex setups. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to create an account, set up your own Minecraft server, connect to it, and even add modes, mods and plugins all for free. Stick around because I'll be sharing some crucial tips you don't want to miss out. But before we jump in, a quick shout out to Rehost, my hosting service that is currently in beta. If you're looking for a hosting service for your Discord bot, maybe a lightweight VPS for products, you should definitely check it out. Even though it's still in beta, beta, there will never be any credit card required and everything works in a system of coins. I'll like to check it out in the description box down below if you're interested. Alright, let's get into the details of this hosting service. For a free setup, you'll get free a pretty solid configuration, up to 2 cores, 4GB of RAM and 10GB of disk space. This should be plenty to run Minecraft smoothly, even if you're hosting a few friends. You'll also get a free subdomain, which is awesome for easily sharing your server link, and best of all, it's 24-7 capable, so your server can stay online even if you're not actively using it. More on that soon. Let's yeah. get to setting Let's get but to setting up your sure account. You're not using it. First things yeah. first. Let's go through the setup. Open any browser. It can be Chrome, Edge, Brave, Opera JX, anything. But make sure that you're not using a VPN. This is important because using a VPN could actually get your account suspended, which will stop you from creating a server. So once you're sorted and you don't have any VPN. Go ahead and type phalixnodes.net in your browser and hit enter. On the website, you'll see a sign in button on the top right corner. Click on that and go to the dashboard. You'll see several sign in options. Personally, I'll use Discord because it's quick and easy, but feel free to pick whichever option works best for you. Now that we're in the dashboard, let's create the server. Find the create server button at the top left and click it. You'll see a form where you can enter a few details. First, the name of your server. This could be anything from my epic Minecraft world to something unique to your theme. Next, pick a game you want to host it. For most people, that would be Minecraft, uh, Java or Bedrock, but you can also host other games if you want to experiment with something different. Finally, Choose a subdomain for your server, which will be part of your server's address. So this will let you connect to your Minecraft server. Once you're happy with your settings, click on the button called Free 8, and the system will take a moment to set things up, usually around 15 seconds. Then, boom, your server is up and created. But wait, don't get too excited just yet. There's still a bit more that you need to do before starting to play. Let's make your Minecraft server online. Alright, so to access your server, follow along what I'm currently doing on the screen. And once that's done, you'll find a start button on the server dashboard. So, go ahead and click it. It might take a few minutes to start up, so be patient. Although, while it's loading, it's a good time to check your server settings if you want to customize anything like changing the world settings or adding any special configuration, so opening um, the server to crack versions and all other stuff like that. Once it's running, head over to your Minecraft launcher. Launch the version of Minecraft you intended to play, so it could be Java or Bedrock, and once you're in, click on multiplayer and add the server address, which can, which you can find it in the server dashboard and connect like you normally would. And there you have it, you're inside of your own Minecraft server. Hooray! Let's play. No, 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 let's not play quite yet, because we need to add mods and plugins. So, now for the fun part, let's talk about adding mods and plugins to personalize your server. Adding mods and plugins can make the game a lot more exciting, whether you're building a server, an adventure server, adding custom mods, or just wanting some quality of life improvements. So, 
here's how to do it. Go on the server tab of your dashboard and look for the modes or plugins tab, depending on what you want to add. If you're on Java, you can use plugins from sources like Spigot or Bucket. There's a huge range to choose from. For example, you can add economy plugins, custom commands, or even custom maps. Brush through the layers, pick anything you like, and just click install. That's it. The mod or plugins will automatically be added to your server, and you'll be able to play with all those new features. Have fun exploring all the options. And so now, the moment you've been all waiting for. Let's cover up how to keep the server up and running around the clock. There's a feature called Extend Time that will be your best friend here. Every time you click on this button, it adds, it adds up 3 more hours of uptime. The cool thing is that there is no daily limit on how many times you can click it. So technically, you can keep your server 24-7 as long as you're available to click the button when needed. Just a heads up, though automating the button clicking might be tempting, but it could violate the terms of service, so I'd recommend just sticking to manual clicks to keep everything legit. And just before we go, I'm going to show you some extra tips and tricks that I've been using for this testing, so you get the best uh, TPS and the best quality out of these servers. First, optimize performance. If you're planning to add, if you're planning to add a lot of mods or plugins. Keep an eye on your server memory usage. Mods can be fun, but adding too many might slow things down. Try to balance the features with performance. Also something I've realized is while using resource packs. You can also add custom resource packs to make your server look unique. Just upload the resource pack file to your server settings and the players will automatically get prompted to download it when they join. And trust me, this adds a ton of immersion. Also. If you want to host some, uh, if you're hosting with friends, try setting up scheduled game, scheduled games, nights, or events. This keeps people interested to make your server a go-to spot for everyone. And also, this doesn't leave the server running 24/7. If you have special events for like a night of playing, you'll see it's much more funnier than just keeping the server running 24/7. Also, this is an important one. Don't forget to back up your world. This one's crucial. Every now and then, make sure to download the backup of your world. This way, anything goes. If anything goes wrong, or you want to move your server to a new host, you won't lose all of the progress. And finally, server security, make sure. And finally, the most important one that I had while testing is of course the security. Just make sure you keep your server private if you only want friends to join. You can also create a whitelist of specific usernames to prevent random players from joining and keep your server experience exactly as you want. So here we are everyone, now you know how to create, customize and keep a Minecraft server running for free. I hope this tutorial helped you understand each step and gave you some ideas for making your server unique. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful and drop any questions if you have, I'll be happy to help. Of course, also don't forget to join my Discord server where you can also ask questions and there should be a team dedicated to that. And if not, um, and finally, if you're interested in hosting more than just a Minecraft server, don't forget to check out Rehost for Discord bot hosting, VPS setups, and more. Thank you for watching and enjoy your new Minecraft server.